Looks like there's some tea coming. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural episode six of season six. And this is the one where they really sort of dive into Sam's untrustworthiness. The episode starts off with everyone in this diner telling this girl the hard and basic truth, whether about her or about uh, their own lives. In the end, the girl is so hard hit, especially with someone, well, one of her family members telling her some pretty rough truths that uh, she kills herself. And it turns out that this town is kind of having this effect. There's something going on. Sometimes I think I can't get pregnant because God knows my marriage is a sham. Why'd I say that? All the while that's happening, Sam is still doing his thing, but Dean does not trust him within an inch of his life. He doesn't want to trust him. There's just something clearly, clearly wrong. He's asking for Bobby's help about it, especially with the events of what happened in the last episode. Overall, this episode actually has a good little bit of humor in it with the whole telling the truth thing. I'm sitting like this so you'll look at my breasts. I just bought them. I need a lot of attention. Uh, now I remember why I thought the season 14 finale felt so garbagey and overused. It's because they literally had done this already. When no one could tell no lies, this is the episode that did it first. Dab literally copied shit that he was a part of. That's not a surprise, but I'm just saying. You are made of stupid. I thought the monster was kind of a, a strange thing. This Greek goddess that feeds off of the drama. And then when they go to confront her, she pushes them against some body corpse thing and that somehow knocks them both out. I thought that was a bit odd. That shot in particular was just strange. It's why they fade out of it so fast. All right, this is how we're going to kind of make these guys get a concussion for the eight billionth time. And then they wake up and she starts talking about what she is. She talks to Dean about it and Dean is able to say, well, I wanted to kill my brother the other day, but I was somewhat convinced by what he said to me and I am still worried about him, but I feel I can trust him slightly. Then she goes and talks to Sam. She's like, you're outright lying. There is something wrong with you. They fight her, they kill her. And then Dean does confront Sam and Sam says, there's something wrong with me, really wrong. I've known it for a while. Take these risks because I know that I take the the emotional factor out of it. And then Dean beats the ever-loving shit out of him. Which, to be honest, that is a pretty realistic reaction to what he was told. And I know that as we go along, we're gonna dip more into the Soul of Sam thing, but I think we're going back to monster stuff, which is unfortunate because, like I said, we are now on a story track that we actually enjoy, that we are actually invested in. And then we're gonna go back to this monster stuff. All three storylines, the war in heaven, the monsters, and Sam's soul, there's not enough of all three of them to take up the majority of the season, so they kind of interspace the three of them. I imagine this was actually made during the process because as we've all said, Sarah Gamble basically had to come in with two broken legs. She had no real story narrative choice to do here, so she kind of took three options and played them out as far as she could to see what people were most invested in. In the end, this episode's not bad. I think that the confrontation at the end is a little bit silly. The best part is Sam and Dean's interaction with each other, as well as the dentist killing the guy. <laughs> so in the end, I'm gonna give this episode a four to seven. It's okay, it's got some good gore, it's got some good humor, it's got some decent kind of interactions. I just feel that the ending falls short especially with how the how intense the last episode was so this one's like a little bit of a bring me down just a standard kind of filler ish episode tiny thing but the grip on her she starts on my toes and i feel like i am whoa whoa hey that's my thoughts on it what did you guys have to say this episode was a good one i can't believe that both bobby and dean actually thought that sam was once again possessed by lucifer i definitely knew that that wasn't the case with sam's behavior i feel really sorry for dean when he had the conversation with lisa about what happened and she has every right to be angry unfortunately she's right about Dean and Sam's codependence on each other and she's right that Dean always buries his feelings instead of dealing with them. <laughs> I was happy seeing Dean beat the daylights out of Sam and Dean had every right to be furious. No, that's a brutal beating that he gives and yeah, Lisa has every right to be angry.
I was really satisfied with this episode. We got several moments of humor, and the storyline progressed to the point where Solus Sam readily admitted that he has a problem and asked for help. It's an interesting twist on the story because the question remains whether they can retrieve Sam's soul and make him whole again. Overall, good episode. Is my comment too simple? Let me know. Nope, that's totally fine. Honestly, Cookie, this is the perfect format. I'm really liking short and concise ones. If uh, that could be replicated with others, that'd be great. I really enjoyed the rewatch of this episode. It's been a long while since I watched these episodes. I gotta say, it's they hold up a lot better than I remember. I like the idea that Sam is just an asshole now and because he's come back from the cage. Dean being blasted by the truth, especially from Bobby, is worth a laugh. The turn when the cat lady speaks to Sam is great and that cat out of the bag where we are in the same boat as Dean. I do enjoy the the almost throwaway nature of the Monster of the Week episode and being more so with Sam and how it feels cut into two parts of the next, uh, the start of the next episode. They do tend to nail those cliffhangers, five out of seven. Jeremy, at this point in the season, during your first viewing, what was did you think was going on with Sam? This idea of soul soullessness had not yet been established, so I'm curious of what your theories were. To be honest, actually, I did have already a theory of what I thought soullessness was back when Dean fought against Pestilence or sorry, a famine. I thought that that whole, there's a big nothing inside of you, I thought that was soullessness or a fractured soul. So I actually really did not have any idea what was going on with Sam, but it was clear that there was something very strange and I was very interested to see how they would figure it out. Rewatching it now, it's still actually quite enjoyable. You can't handle the truth is proof enough that nobody wants to be told the truth about them or in anything in general in a complete fantastic bodily horror fashion. I particularly love the special effects and the practical effects in this episode of all simplicity. The humor checks out very nicely once more. I love how this episode is a means of Dean getting honestly conf confrontation with Sam, Lisa, and Bobby while he likely wouldn't have gotten it otherwise. Also, the end scene with Dean beating up Sam is my favorite moment in the episode because it's both expected and unexpected, and I just love how raw it is without the music. Oh, fun fact for you Potterheads, the Roman goddess Vertas inspired J.K. Rowling's truth telling potion, Vertacetum. Hmm. Again, another decent episode, and even though it's a filler, this one's cleverly woven into the main plot with uh, revealing Sam's soullessness to Dean. Dean's reaction towards Sam at the end makes me laugh so goddamn hard. I think the execution made it unintentionally hilarious, despite the fact that I know it's supposed to be a serious scene. I'll say that when he does the first punch, yes, that makes you laugh, but then when he just gives the absolute shit kicking to him, that's pretty crazy. Good episode. Finding out Sam has no soul is an interesting plot line indeed, but blame the Dean blaming Sam for coming back without his soul doesn't track. Where did he get that choice? Cass is there. We know that he did bring him back soulless, perhaps accidentally, but was a better hunter for Castiel and Crowley wanted. Jensen has said at conventions that he did not enjoy this arc because it was so hard to act across from Jared being soulless Sam, a very different character than he was used to. I, I will say that, yeah, Dean is the very weak it part of this entire season and his constant blame and his constant hate and constant antagonism toward Sam in this season just doesn't make any sense he's just being a dick honestly all right guys thank you for your comments now we're going on to episode seven of season six so make sure to give me your comments about that in the comments below and i will read those off in the next review otherwise guys i hope you're enjoying the reviews if you are leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe and if you think other people would be interested in these reviews please share abound so on the way to four thousand subscribers if i'm correct at this point if i've passed it already woohoo as always appreciating you guys watching and i'll see you guys next week